All right, guys, I've got another reaction video for you today. Uh, this is a really cool band. I don't know if uh, many people have heard of this band. It's called Lie and the Chameleon. It's a J-Rock band. Uh, as the video goes on, they have a lot of songs, but uh, this, is, this is my favorite music video from them. Um, as it goes on, you'll probably notice that there is not only rock influence, J-Rock influence, kind of what is typical of J-Rock, but also a little bit of Scott influence, uh, which I think kind of takes it to the next level. But it is kind of a pure rock song. And it's it's just a dope as hell video. So let's take a let's take a look here. So right off the bat, you gotta love the style of this band. Uh, I mean. Everyone's kind of, you know, got their own unique style, uh, but it's all cohesive in the sense that it's this sort of meld of rock, especially like, you know, she, she's got kind of a, hold on, let's, let's get to the singer. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, she's got kind of like a Janis Joplin vibe, and she's kind of wearing kind of the, you know, Nirvana used to play shows wearing lab coats. It's kind of that vibe as well, but just that loose fitting kind of Janis Joplin vibe. So you know that that type of music is in their repertoire of what they're pulling from. And then you can kind of see the other guy, especially the, the bassist, kind of skanking around. And you could hear in the kind of the guitar riff that makes up kind of the main uh, repeated uh, riff of the verse um, that there's a lot of ska influence in here and uh, helps differentiate this band from the crowd, I think. So they're kind of doing like, uh, you know, music battle between each of the individual performers in the background here. That's kind of what like the narrative of this video is. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting shots here. It's mostly not necessarily narrative, but more visual. Here they've got the glass breaking. And I think that the director of this video was trying to craft a video that goes along with the intensity of the song via using visual effects. And I think they accomplished that really nicely. So that's a great transition because this, this song is very busy. There's a lot of notes in a short period of time, uh, but from this transition from, you know, verse to chorus, uh, they kind of, it's not a decrescendo. It's, I don't know what the musical term for this would be, but it's like a decluttering. Like they, over the course of like, you know, about eight bars, they just kind of drop a lot of the notes and maintain the same, you know, general harmony and melody of the song, but just drop a lot of the busyness, a lot of the filler notes and then pick it right back up as the transition ends. Really good. I have to mention this, I love that transition. It just, like I was saying before, very similar to the kind of transition I was saying before, but then it culminates in just like one single cowbell hit, and uh, they accentuated in the music video as well by her tapping that metal avocado. I have no idea what that actually was, but uh, yeah, I just, I love that transition. It's such a perfect transition, especially for this band. It just fits the whole song. By the way, I also want to mention, you've got the subtitles here in English. Like, this sounds very interesting. It sounds like the lyrics are very, very interesting. Like, just where I've frozen right here. Unreasonable demand from one to the next. The ending can't be bragged if the time is to, if the time to quit is bad. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it sounds like it was poetic in Japanese, and we've got sort of like a somewhat garbled Google Translate. It's like very hard to translate lyrics. Um, but yeah, like I don't know what they're saying, but uh, as I watch the subtitles go by, they catch my eye. It seems very interesting. 
Okay, so this guy, he lost his, uh, his battle with uh, either the guitar player or the bass, uh, the guitar player, I think. Uh, but now he's loading up on carbs, so he's eating onigiri and he's, uh, he's gonna down a gigantic two liter bottle of Coke to get himself pumped up for his next match. Chorus is super catchy. I can't repeat it because my Japanese is very elementary, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a very, very catchy chorus and it sticks in the mind. That's for sure. And that's a good one. It starts the transition. It's kind of a callback to the previous two transitions, but then it kind of uh, tricks you a little bit because it goes straight into the bridge. Very nicely done. I think one thing this video really pulls off as well is it gives you a sense of like the camaraderie uh, present within this band's dynamic, and that's very likable. It makes me like them as a band, and it makes me want to <laughs> see them as like a team together. It feels like a team effort. And then here, this, this is great. Like I said, I think the music video is trying to represent the intensity of the song, and here, you know, you've got this glitch effect. Um, and then right before this, like in the slower bridge part, you have this kind of smoke effect and the black crawling up from the bottom. And then as it starts like getting really fast again, you start having this glitch effect. And I think, you know, this is not really a narrative music video. It's more of just a visually interesting music video with the performance. Uh, so I think that one, that strategy of having the visuals represent the song in terms of intensity, almost like a, um, I don't know, like a, like a dance light, like I've got going on back here, like a light show a little bit. Uh, I think that's a good choice, and I think that uh, they're pulling it off pretty well. This is, uh, this is the same uh, pattern as my little symbol that I've got as my avatar here on YouTube. I use that everywhere. Uh, total coincidence, I, I don't know. So now I like them even more. The one, two, three, uh, Shigo Roku, that part of the song they've repeated it. This is the third time they repeated it. That's another one that kind of sticks in the mind. There's a lot of catchiness in this song. There's a lot of callbacks to previous things they've done uh, during the song that are just like slightly different, enough for you to feel this reminiscence, uh, but not enough for it to sound repetitive. So in terms of composition, I think that use of you know repetition and callback is really strong. Yeah, so that is uh, my introduction to you for Lion the Chameleon. This is a great band. If you like J-Rock, uh, this is a band I would recommend. It's not one of like the all-time J-Rock bands. Like if you ask uh, people who like J-Rock to recommend you bands, you know, it's, it's not the first one that's going to come up. It's a little more off the beaten path, but uh, excellent band. I think you should check them out. Lion the Chameleon. All right, cheers.